It's been four full days since Prajwal Revanna, member of parliament of the JDS from Hassan in Karnataka, slipped out of the country. Now his party, his relatives, his family want the public to believe that it was a planned trip. However, nobody is buying this rubbish because Prajwal Revanna happened to slip out just after his constituency went to the polls and just after a special investigation team investigation was set up by the Siddharamaya government in Karnataka. Not a word has been heard from Prajwal Revanna since and he is no small fry viewer. He is a sitting member of parliament, an elected representative and the heir apparent of one of Karnataka's biggest dynastic political families. Prajwal Revanna is not only an elected representative, he is the elected representative of Hassan, which is a seat considered a bastion of Deve Gauda, a former prime minister of this country. In hundreds of videos that are now irresponsibly doing the rounds and revealing the faces and identities of victims, the horror in Karnataka continues unabated and yet this shameless member of parliament has not said one word not one clarification not put out his defense not added to the conversation he is hiding like a coward and holidaying abroad as we speak remember the name prajwal revana viewer because this is a politician whose doings and undoings have been known for a long time now in 2019, when he became a Lok Sabha MP, it was, remember, as a JDS Congress Alliance MP that he entered the Lok Sabha. There are tweets from that time of Siddharamaya praising Prajwal Revanna as a fine youth leader who will do Karnataka proud. The question now is, how far back do these videos actually go? These videos of sexual exploitation, manipulation, bordering on rape, and torture of women. How far back do they go? Do they predate his political career in 2019? Is it really possible that the powers that be over the last five to six years were clueless about an alleged sexual predator who clearly had a predilection with manipulating, torturing and filming women in this terrible, terrible way? As the finger pointing continues in Karnataka, as the Congress party points a finger directly at the BJP, the questions will equally be asked about whether there has been complicity for the last many years allowing a predator like Prajwal to have a free run and victimize woman after woman, woman after woman, woman after woman, from a policewoman to a maid, to someone who worked for the JDS, to party workers, to a supporter, to voters, to perhaps even the public at large because we don't really know how many women there actually are and how many victims. We're told thousands of videos. How many different women will actually have the heart to come forward? And remember, while Prajwal Revanna is holidaying abroad with no clarity from his party, his family or himself on whether he's going to return to India soon to face the law and hopefully there will be some clarity on it. Remember that the identities of his victims have gone out because people have been forwarding those videos without any form of morphing or masking. And therefore, with these videos going viral completely in Karnataka, the lives and the safety of each of these women stands in danger. So I would like to appeal to the public not to share these videos and to speak to the Karnataka police directly and say, Perhaps these victims need special attention at this point of time because the bottom line viewer is that a member of parliament, a member of the August Lok Sabha of this country is sitting outside India with no word from him. We don't know if anybody is in touch with him at this point of time. He's just been suspended, nice little mild little touch by the JDS saying we'll take action on him after the SIT provides its actual readings. That is where things stand right now with Prajwal Ravana.